This video is broken down into three different sections based on difficulty. In each section, I have exercises that concentrate on the front, the sides, and the back of the core. In my typical workout, I'll do generally about two to three exercises from each of those parts of the body, and I'll do that through the course of the two or three sets uh, that I'm doing. Uh, so it might take me about 20 minutes. Once you get to where you can do it on a bench, then maybe you do it straight arm, like a push-up, and then graduate to doing a front plank, resting on your elbows. For the side, it's really tough to beat a plain old side plank. The important thing is, when you get yourself in this position, to try to imagine a straight line from between your heels up through your head, and try to keep yourself as straight as possible. And here's the rear plank. Same as the front and the side, the point is to try to hold a stable, solid position for as long as you feel comfortable doing. For some intermediate versions of these exercises, you can do a front plank with raising your alternate arm and leg. This is the spider push-up. This one is really, really good for incorporating part of your upper body with some of your core exercise. Here's a version of the regular front plank, but you just raise one leg and hold it for a few seconds and then raise the other. You'll start to really feel this not just in the stomach for holding the plank, but you'll start to feel this in your glutes. This is a great exercise to strengthen not just your stomach, but also some of those connective muscles uh, between the ribs and on the sides of your obliques. I'm not sure what this is called. I just call it a rolling side plank. I try to do 10 repetitions of this and I try to do the side leg raise because it ends up using the outside of the glute which doesn't get a whole lot of use normally. And this is a rear plank raising one leg at a time and trying to hold it for 5 or 10 seconds at a time. You'll really start to feel this in your hamstrings and your glutes, as well as your lower back. This hip thrust is really good for incorporating your hamstring and glutes together. When you perform this, concentrate not on using the hamstring to pull the leg in, but to use your glute to push your pelvis up. And here are some of the more difficult exercises. This is the slow leg raise. I will typically do this for a minute and during the course of the minute, I'll probably do about three cycles from down to up and back down. The goal is to go very slow, stay controlled, and control your breathing. This is the hanging leg raise. The most important part about this, as you begin the maneuver, exhale and curl your pelvis up toward your chest as you begin the contraction. Using the straps, this exercise in a push-up position is really, really good if you take your time and go very, very slow. You'll notice that after about 30 seconds, you'll really start to feel the burn. Probably the most difficult thing that I'll do in my core workout, but has the biggest benefit, is the dragon flag. In my last video, I did this on a bench at the gym. This is the easiest because the bench has a nice place to grab onto and it's nice and padded. But because I wanted to show that all these exercises can be done at home, there's a place in my foyer where I have a little step down with a lip that I can grab. So if I put a towel down or a yoga mat and I grab this, I can do it almost as easily as in the gym. This exercise is really good and it hits everything from the chest all the way down to the groin. This exercise is great for the obliques. This is the windshield wiper.
Since most people do their ab workouts and generally don't do things for the lower back, these next couple are really, really good. If your gym has a really slippery floor, you can just take your shoes off and use your socks. In this case, I'm at home, so I have two of these furniture movers, which I'll put under my heels. And this allows me to do this exercise, which really, really concentrates the contraction in the glutes. If you had a set of exercise straps, this is great. What I have is a pair of homemade TRX straps or jungle gym straps. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on this later. But these are really, really good because it forces you to be able to stabilize your lower body as it's suspended in the straps. Having a strong core has a benefit to almost everything else you do in life and in the gym. If you start to incorporate just a few of these exercises, you'll probably see a benefit pretty quickly. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Appreciate you watching.